In this video, we are going to be looking at chemical equations, okay? So, uh, if you remember with the last video, we discussed about a chemical reaction. So, in chemical reaction, you have reactants and then they form into products by rearranging the atoms in them. So, for example, here, I have um, carbon dioxide and water and then they form this, which is obviously glucose and oxygen. This is photosynthesis. Obviously, that is a simplified um, pathway, but you know that there are photosystem one, photosystem two, light re reaction and dark reactions that involve that are involved in photosynthesis. But that's the idea. So the first one that the first thing that you have that we have to learn is this concept of products and reactants. So here in the reactants again, these bonds will be broken, and then they will reform back into the products. So we have the reactants and the products, and sometimes the reactants could be have different phases. It could be solid, liquid, gas, and the ratio of the substances also. For example, here, you know that there is only one methane. You know here that there is only one methane, but then it needs two oxygen gas atoms. And then when it forms the product, it would form one carbon dioxide and two water molecules. So, uh, a chemical reaction, therefore, is a kind of a shorthand way of writing. And when you writing or communicating what is happening in the chemical reaction, and in, in this short way of writing, you would know which are the reactants, which are the products, what are the phases of the reactants, is it solid, liquid, gas, and what are the proportions, so how many methane, how many oxygen gases, how many carbon dioxide gases, uh, carbon dioxide molecules, and how many water molecules are involved in each process. Okay? So, moving on, uh, before we write that, for example, we have to be able to represent the substances into what we call a chemical formula, right? So, here, instead of we write the names like methane gas, oxygen gas, and water, obviously, because it's a shorthand way of communicating, we have to write it in a shorthand way of expressing that molecule, and that is through a chemical formula. So in a uh, chemical equation, you have two sides, the reactants and the products. And then take note that we always have conventions in science. So by convention, we write the reactants on the left side, your left when you're looking at the paper the left side and then the product on the right side it's always the uh, the convention and then we have subscripts and superscripts i'm um, sorry coefficients and subscripts so subscripts are found inside the chemical formula so for example for example let me just highlight this mm -hmm. make it bigger that so this is the subscript that's a subscript and another subscript and you have the coefficient this is the coefficient two and then there's a, a coefficient here which is understood to be one okay so um, a, a subscript denotes the number of atoms that are bonded so for example O2, it means there are two oxygen atoms bonded to each other, right? While the coefficient tells you how many of that molecule is present. So, for example, 2H2O, it means that there are two hydrogen, uh, 2H2O, that 2 here means there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. But this coefficient 2, that means there are two molecules of water in there okay so that is very important later on so for example uh, that's i mean that's important to distinguish between a coefficient and a subscript because for example if you change the subscript for example water is h2o and then you change it into h2o2 it changes the whole meaning of the chemical chemical formula because now it means there is two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule, and that's it. 
The bigger one is the oxygen molecule. The smaller one are the hydrogen molecules. But if you have H2O2, it means you have two oxygen atoms bonded to two hydrogen atoms. So it's a completely different substance. It has different properties. Water is different from hydrogen peroxide. But if you change the coefficient, it doesn't change the composition. Because when you say 1 H2O, this is the coefficient, versus you say 2 H2O, 1 H2O simply means it is water, but it, there's one molecule of it. If you have 2 H2O, it means you have two molecules of water. So you see, coefficient is different from subscript. If you change the subscript of a chemical formula, you're changing the chemical composition itself. But if you're changing the coefficient, you're just changing the number of the molecules of that particular uh, substance, right? And then when you write chemical equations, there are also symbols. So for example, the plus symbol, it tells you the combination of reactants or products. So for example, if you say um, uh, Na, I'm sorry, if you say um, Na plus Cl, it means you are combining sodium and chlorine. This one tells you to produce or to yield, right? And then this SLGAQ, it means the uh, phases of the particular um, substances involved. So is, it so is it solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous? Meaning it's a substance that is dissolved in water. This arrow, as in contrast to this arrow, this arrow means there's, it's a reversible reaction. Reversible meaning if you have the reactants, they form to, to create products, but the products can also reverse and form back the reactants. That's what we call a reversible reaction. This one, when you uh, write the word heat or the triangle, indicates that heat is supplied to the reaction. So you need heat for the reaction to proceed. And then if you have a chemical formula written above the yield sign, it indicates the use of a catalyst or a solvent, right? So a catalyst is something that, uh, something that the reactants need in order to proceed the reaction. Without it, it will not uh, react. So for example, here, how do you read this chemical reaction? It says, uh, you read it as two atoms of sodium in solid form, see, solid, reacts with two molecules of water in liquid form, see. See, it says here two molecules. I'm sorry, let me, let me change. So, so here it says two, so I have to make this smaller. Okay, so you have here two molecules of water in liquid form. Um, produces or forms two molecules of sodium hydroxide. See, this is sodium hydroxide. But that sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water. That's why we have here the symbol AQ or aqueous. Plus two molecules of hydrogen gas. And obviously it's in gaseous form because it's hydrogen gas. Right, so that's how you read a chemical uh, equation. So moving on, when you have, for example, this, it means that there's one methane gas, one methane gas molecule reacting with two oxygen gas molecules. When you heat it, because remember this is, this means heat is added. When you heat those two, it will produce carbon dioxide in gaseous form and two molecules of water still in gaseous form, so in water vapor. So should be able to answer uh, all these questions. Like for example, what are the reactants? Well, the reactants are methane and oxygen gas because in the left side, what are the products? It's carbon dioxide and water, see? And how many of the reactants are needed for the reaction? It needs one molecule of methane and two molecules of oxygen gas. How many of the products are produced? One molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. So see here, you can see that's the role of the coefficient. Then what are the physical states of the reactants and products? Well, the methane is gas, oxygen is gas, carbon dioxide is gas, and water is also in gaseous form. And then question number six, is the chemical reaction reversible? 
does the product form back the reactants? The answer is no, because this is not a double direction arrow. It's not a double headed arrow, or it's not two arrows pointing to both to either side. And then does the system need heat in order for it to start the reaction? Yes, because there's a delta symbol written above the arrow. Again, delta means heat. And then does the system need another chemical uh, as a catalyst or solvent? No, there's nothing written in there. Okay. So by that, you should be able to answer. So uh, just, a, just a hint, for example, this one, this is copper. It's written in the, it's written above the arrow. So that means this reaction will not proceed without copper. So copper then is a catalyst for this reaction. Okay. So that's how you uh, kind of um, kind of write or kind of uh, interpret a chemical uh, equation. So now the another skill that you need to do is you, you need to be able to to make a chemical equation when you are asked to. So for example here, um, copper sulfate forms iron iron sulfate and copper. So obviously, to in order to do that, we'll just have to say copper sulfate right which is COSO4 and it says reacts our oh, iron um it's, it says iron here so you have to start with iron right iron and then reacts with remember reacts with means plus reacts with that to form so scratch this this is not should not be there form iron to sulfate, which is FeSO4, FeSO4, and copper. So plus copper. Okay. So that's how you create a chemical equation. Now this chemical equation is not yet balanced because that's what we will discuss in the next videos. But essentially, how you translate this into an equation is that but then you say sir but that but in that example you have already written the correct chemical formula that's why it's easy to do how about if there's no chemical formula so how do we do that so obviously that takes practice you have to be able to know what the chemical formula is for each chemical each substance but um, that would take more time when we discuss it, but uh, I believe that we you already had some discussion like that in grade nine. And again, a lot of times you don't have to memorize this stuff. You know, when you when you you can research about what's the chemical formula of something, right? So it's not something that um, I believe every student should memorize. I mean, how could you? There's probably thousands and thousands of substances out there so uh, just know that you have to do that right and then modifying a chemical equation so rewrite the chemical equations and make necessary correction to make them correct right to answer in separate sheet of paper so how do you uh, make this correct in this reaction the reactant is in solid phase well the first and the second products are in li liquid and gaseous states respectively so obviously what makes this equation wrong is aside from it's not balanced but that's another is it not balanced? Balanced? Yeah. Well, yeah, it is balanced already. But the idea is we did not uh, indicate the, the phases. So you have to write S here. You have to write L here for liquid. And you have to write G here for gas. So something like that. Right? So in, uh, in this case, uh, you should be able to answer this question now. So for example, what, what chemical is used as a catalyst in the second reaction? Is the chemical reaction in B reversible? What do you need to do so to HOG, I mean mercury, uh, HGO, so HG is mercury, of course, and O is oxygen, so that it decomposes into HG or mercury and O2, right? And then what are the phases of the substances involved in B? And then what is the physical state of reactant in A? So you should be able to answer this if you now know how to read a chemical reaction so that's it for this video i just wanted to discuss to you that in a chemical reaction again it's a shorthand way of expressing what's happening in a chemical reaction in a, in a chemical reaction so 
you have to tell you you have to tell the reader what is reacting and what are the products then you have to tell what are the you have to you have to express what are the faces of the substances involved and you have to uh, express if is there a catalyst needed is there heat needed and is the reaction is the reaction going to reverse and form back the, the reactants from the products and so on and so forth so the goal is when you see a chemical reaction you should be able to interpret which are the products which are the reactants what are the phases is does this need a chemical reaction uh, does this need a uh, catalyst or heat and other stuff okay